Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. As the title suggests, we're going to be extracting data from a SharePoint list and saving it to a CSV file. Uh, but we're going to be adding another element to that, which is applying a filter to the data we are extracting from our SharePoint list. So the list in question is what you can see on the screen now. And you can see it's a load of people data. It's worth noting here that this is all randomly generated data. So should any of this coincide with actual information, it is complete chance so it's all just randomly generated data you'll see that I've got multiple columns but the one in particular is this city field and we've got about I think there's five or six different cities uh, and what I want to do is I want to create a CSV file but only for uh, the cities of Bristol and you can see one of them here so what we'll be doing is using power automate to first obviously get all this information from our SharePoint list apply the filter uh, that we want to do for the city and then of course save that as a CSV CSV file. And just to take one step further, well not for one step further, but you can see we've got an empty document library here uh, in which we'll be placing our CSV file. So what we'll do is just jump straight into Power Automate and get on with it. So there's a couple of obviously navigation steps to get into Power Automate if you're not familiar with the tool. Uh, so just look in the description of this video and I'll show you those exact steps rather than covering it in the video. So the first thing of course we need to do is a new flow and for me I'm going to just do an instant cloud flow. Uh, you may want to be doing a scheduled cloud flow if you want this to run on you know at a certain time or a certain day and of course we've got other videos in our playlist which should be linked on the screen somewhere now if you want to learn more about those uh, those obviously those triggers so let's just go for instant cloud for low for now and of course the all important thing we need to do is give it a title so let's call this people data uh, if I data and I'm going to call it Bristol because it's specific to Bristol and again not important but we just know it's going to be a manually triggered flow uh, for the purpose of this example so the very first thing that we need to do is, of course, get our information from SharePoint. So in order to do that, we'll obviously click on to new step. And what I'm going to do is just type in here SharePoint, uh, which will give us all of our actions available or applicable to SharePoint. So for us, what we need to do is get items. Click on that. And then, of course, we just need to fill in these boxes. So site address. So for me, it's going to be my um, my SharePoint site and the list name we can see connected to that site. It's given me a list of all the possible lists available on the site. Uh, for me, it's called people data. And then that's the key information it needs. So at this point, it will extract everything from that list, whereas obviously we know there's a filter we like to apply to it. So what we're going to do is go into show advanced options and the particular field we're interested in is this filter query. And you can see there's other options available to us. But again, for the purpose of this video, we're going to be looking just at filter query. So if I go back and look at my people data, uh, so as in the list, we can see that the field we want to extract is called city. And we know that obviously we want to search for or filter on the value of Bristol. So let's go back to Power Automate. So if you're not familiar with OData, uh, it is really easy or simple to get started with. Again, if you Google uh, any scenario that you're trying to work out, uh, you will find the results for you. But for this scenario where we're literally just trying to filter based on an equals value, all we need to do is provide our field name, the two characters of EQ, which obviously is short for equal, and the search term or the filter term we want to use is Bristol. So within single quotes, so make sure they're single rather than double, we're just going to type the word of Bristol and then another single quote. So at that stage, you may feel it's all sorted. Your city you know, field here obviously matches is, matches the, <laughs> the field name city here. But actually, it's not, or unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. Uh, what Power Automate wants you to do is be more specific with your field name. So rather than just the description that you actually see in class as the field name, we need to know obviously what the actual, so we call it back end field name is for that particular field. In order to do so, we'll go back into our SharePoint list. And as you navigate to the top of the screen, you'll see there's a set in, settings icon. So this cog that you see here. Uh, so I'm going to click on that and then we can go into list settings and obviously it will load up. And then once we're on this screen, we can obviously navigate down to our list of available columns and obviously go to the one of interest. So for us, it is city. So we just click onto that. And OK. All this seems all good and this as you did if you didn't know already this is where you can obviously update or change the settings of your field but what we're really interested in is if you look up at the URL 
and cast all the way over to the far right hand side. You can see that it's given a reference of field equals field three. So field three is actually the, should we call it the true name of my city column. So what I'm gonna do is simply copy that value there, go back into Power Automate, and rather than have the word city here, I'm simply gonna replace it with field three. So again, when you're getting started with like filtering stuff like SharePoint, this is one of those simple things that can obviously trip you up and cause a problem. But this is what you need to do to make sure you won't have those issues. Once we've done that, we've successfully done the part of extracting our filtered data from our SharePoint list. The next thing in our scenario is we want to create a CSV file. So all I'm going to do is go a new step here and I'm going to type in here simply create CSV. And luckily, well not luckily, but you can see it's the top one here, create CSV table. So all I need to do is select into here and you will look and you can see we've got some dynamic content. So for me, I want to just select value. So it's gonna be obviously the list of items that we achieved in this get items here. And we know it's associated with that one because you can see this step here, it's called get items. And you can see all the values uh, captured within that step are um, obviously grouped under this section here of get items. So we'll select a value in there. And then once we click out of it, oh no, if we go to show, sorry, if we go into show advanced options, you can see we've now got this option here for columns. So by default, it will do an automatic, or it will try to do an automatic match of your columns to repl uh, replicate what is captured in SharePoint in your CSV file. Um, what I prefer to do is just go into custom, and this just allows you to make sure that you've got the correct headers uh, per the value or desired value from SharePoint. So what I'll do is, well actually just, just go step through these now. So we've got uh, employee ID was the first field I would want. And if I then click in the value section here and scroll down, you can see that I've got my SharePoint um, field here, employee ID, and then just carry on this list. Rather than just go through that slowly, I just fast forwarded to the end having mapped all of those fields. But as hopefully you saw in the video, it's very simple to just make sure that in the left side, you've got the column header you wish to appear in your CSV file, and obviously just map your corresponding value from your SharePoint list. So once we've got that, you know, we've got this CSV table ready to now save as a file. So the next and final step I'm gonna do is go into new step. And here I'm simply gonna do create file. And obviously there's a number of options available to this, but the one we're gonna want, or as per this example, is create file with SharePoint. So once we click that, again, we just need to make sure we confirm our SharePoint site and our folder path. So for me, within shared documents, I've created this example folder. So once I've navigated to that, I will just select example. So in terms of the file name, uh, I want to just call this or I could just call this bristol.csv. But the only thing with that is, as this flow runs uh, multiple times, obviously it's just gonna continuously overwrite that file. Whereas what I'd like to do is just capture a today's date, just so we know obviously when this data was extracted. So what I'm gonna do is simply just, after the web bristol, do an underscore, and then leaving the cursor where it is now, I'm gonna go into expression, and I'm gonna type into here format, date time, open brackets, UTC now, and then do a comma. And then in here, I'm just gonna enter the year, uh, before, uh, month, and the day, and also make sure that is in within single quotes rather than the double quote you've got there. So in single quotes, I've put year or YYYY, capital MM and in lowercase DD. So what this stands for is obviously the year, month and day. Uh, make sure you use uh, capital M's with month because if you use lowercase M's, it's actually gonna get the minutes from the hour rather than the months from the date. And then what this will do when I select on okay, is you can see it's just inserted this custom um, piece of formatting in between the underscore and the dot CSV. What that will do is when, every time this runs, it will obviously save our CSV file as Bristol underscore and today's date. So if you run this over multiple days, you're gonna have a record of when that file was generated. You don't have to do this. You could just put bristol.csv, but there's an added little piece of information there for you if you find it useful. And lastly, for the file content, all we're gonna do is click within this field and you can see create CSV table step has created this output. 
All we do is select that and lastly select save. We can see that our flow is ready to go. It's not giving us any errors. So all we need to now do is go into test. Uh, we're going to do a manual test, test, a couple of buttons to press here, continue, and lastly run our flow. And then what we should hopefully see shortly is it will update. Yet we can see that our flow has ran successfully. And obviously we can see from the duration of time it took for all of our steps, everything looks like it's done it in a really good um, fashion. Nothing's taken too long to produce. So if we go into our analytics folder, we can now see we've got this new folder that's been created called Bristol underscore today's date. And if we click into there, we should hopefully just see all of our data for Bristol. So yeah, there we go. We've got obviously a reduced number of uh, rows and we can see that for all of those rows, the city that obviously uh, each person lines to is Bristol. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please don't forget to give the video a like. It's not only greatly appreciated by me, but does help that all important YouTube algorithm, uh, enabling other people to also find this video. And if this is your first time watching our channel or you've watched our videos before and you've still yet to subscribe, can I please also ask you to hit that subscribe button and also that bell notification button because that way you will be notified of all of our future videos as they come out. So lastly, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.